Yeah, when you think about, you know, your grass in your front yard dies every year. This is 500 years old. It's pretty amazing that it's still here. My name is Marnie Leist, and I'm the registrar at the Aleutic Museum and Archaeological Repository in Kodiak, Alaska. And right now I am in the collections room deep inside the museum, and we are standing next to the Carlick One collection. <music> Carlick One is a very special collection, and it's special because it has organic preservation. Um, basically, if you put a piece of wood in the ground and come back 500 years from now, nothing's going to be there. But this site is special. It was right near the Carlick River, and there was a lake above the site. The lake was draining into the site, and it preserved everything in the water, kind of airtight environment. If you've heard the theory, like things don't rot in a bog, it's the same principle. So in this collection, we have all kinds of organic materials, such as spruce root basketry, wood, all kinds of organic materials that normally simply just would not exist otherwise. So here's the parallel lines. And then this wavy pattern is the warm woods trail. You know, because it's been folded up, um, little pieces fell out and some pieces of burnt wood, charcoal, fall out so you can tell that this was uh, probably used for cooking. And I think this object is really typically Aleutic. It's a banya scoop, you know, like the sauna, bath, and of course it has, you know, the effigy on the end. And when it's split, someone took the time to repair it. So you'll find a lot of reuse in objects. You'll find a kayak paddle that was turned into a skin stretching board that was used as a cutting board that was used as a rock tong. Because you're making the tools to make the tools. You know, there was no metal, as you mentioned, before you know, the Russians came. So your um, carving tools are teeth. You know, you're making the tools to make the tools. I have just a few birch bark containers. And this is a, a fragment. So the birch and then the spruce root tied. The spruce root basketry, people used to say it came from the Tlingits, only Tlingits made the basketry, but because we have the raw material, you know, we have the pieces split, we have woven pieces in process, we can definitely say for sure that people in Carlick were making spruce root basketry. Archaeologists went there, did some testing in 1983 from Bryn Mawr College, and then came back in 84 and 1985 did a large excavation in 1987, and then in 1994, the entire Carlick River shifted, and the site just started eroding out into the ocean. Um, so there was another two excavations in 94 and 95, and um, the site is totally gone now. If uh, the archeologists probably would have kept excavating from 1987 to 1994, this entire room would be Carlick one. And the site just, it's gone, it's totally gone. It eroded out into the ocean. So not only do we have the excavated materials, but we have all the beach vines. I mean, it's washing out into the ocean and it's washing back up onto the beach. So all the Carlick residents, you know, we're picking up um, pieces and then turning them into the museum. So this is an almost complete spruce root basket. I had to come up with, uh, you know, we try to keep everything in microclimates to help preserve it. Uh, so I had to come up with, you know, some interesting storage. So you could kind of see it still, but, you know, give it support and, keep it in a nice, stable environment. Kodiak, in my mind, is just one big archeological site, and there's just a wealth of information available. And that's why we're lucky to have the museum here, and we're lucky to have Patrick on staff and Sven here be able to do archeology span here and to be able to share the information here and keep the collections here. That wasn't typical. Archeology span used to be done by you know university professors. They come here, they dig a village, and then they go away. You know, this material was stored at Bryn Mawr College, it was stored at the University of Alaska Fairbanks. Finally, when the Aleutic Culture Center and then subsequently the Aleutic Museum was founded, the materials are able to stay in Kodiak for the Kodiak community.